grace to be doers of your word. Lord, receive the thanksgiving in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I yield myself to your God that I won't speak, oh God, now, Father. I yield myself to you this evening that I won't speak, oh God, now, with the with the eloquence of man, but I will speak under your unction in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Praise God. You're all welcome. I mean, you're all welcome this evening and happy Sunday to us all. Happy Sunday, happy Palm Sunday to every single person. You know, traditionally, today's Palm Sunday when um, the Sunday that is that precedes Easter Sunday, the Sunday we have to celebrate Jesus Christ's procession, you know, going into the temple on the donkey where everybody was singing Hosanna in the highest. So I'm believing God. You know, there are so many things we can learn from that. We um, um, Today we'll continue in the series of royal priesthood, but regarding Jesus, you know, him riding on the donkey, that was, I mean, that actually typified his kinship. So today was his kingship, his, his royalty, and today we'll be learning more regarding we'll be learning more regarding the royal priesthood. But before we move on to today's um, series, let's read our let's read our. Um, I want us to read you know our text, which is First Peter two eight and nine. First Peter two eight and nine. So let's read our text, First Peter two eight and nine. I read. And a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So last week we looked at the we looked at the perspectives, talking about the perspectives, we look learned about we defined royal priesthood from different perspectives we look at the royalty part of it we look at the priesthood part of it we look at the fact that we are peculiar people you know we look at those different things we look at the fact that god has placed us in a privileged position we look at the fact that and he has placed us in a prominent position as royal priesthood we also emphasize I mean, another thing, so we looked at the perspectives last week, and then we also moved on to looking at a pattern. We looked at a pattern, you know, a pattern and a principle in the scriptures from the Old Testament, the pattern that God has always been interested in selecting the few. Look, um, he selected a few people. You saw how it started from Abraham. It translated to the country of Israel, and within the country of Israel, he selected the Levites. Um, from among the Levites, he selected, you know, um, a fam the family of Aaron. We saw that and we, we saw the fact that that has been translated into the New Testament, you know, and Jesus Christ has changed everything. So Jesus Christ is now regarded as the firstborn among many. We saw how in the scriptures, the Bible called the, the, the house of Israel is firstborn. And later on, we saw in the New Testament, how Jesus Christ is referred to as the firstborn among among the brethren and that you and I are now royal priesthood. So today we want to emphasize on the priesthood. That's what we'll emphasize on to today. And then so we want to look at the practice. So we've seen the perspectives of royal priesthood. We've seen a pattern, a principle, the fact that you know, things have changed, but the principle still remains the same. So today we want to look at the practice of priesthood, you know, things that you and I, things that were done then in the Old Testament, and you and I as royal priesthood, things that are expected of us to do. So that's what we'll be looking at today. So let's read 1 Peter 2.5, 1 Peter 2.5. So I'm believing God that he himself is going to teach us today. So you also as living stones, I want us also to look at living. We'll see something, we'll be alluding to that later on regarding living sacrifices, living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a holy 
priesthood. So I want to take note of that a priesthood is holy. And we know the Bible needed, it's essential that the Bible emphasize this because you find out that prior to this time, there were different priests. You know, I mean, even till date, you know, there are priests in different practices, you know, but we are saying ours is a holy priesthood. We've been set apart, we've been sanctified to offer, and there is a purpose to offer. So we have said we are peculiar people and there is a purpose for us to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus. So our sacrifices are through Jesus. So you see there, looking at this, uh, the priest is a go-between, is an in-betweener between God and man, between God and man. So he speaks for man and speaks for God. So that means it takes things from man to God and takes things from God to man. It takes things from man to God and from God to man. So he speaks for man and speaks for God. Hebrews 4, 14 to 16. And that will go without saying, for me to be able to speak, Hebrews 4, 14 to 16, for me to be able to speak for God, that means I must understand the language of God. And for me to be able to speak, Speak for man. That means I must understand the language of man. You know, so those are the things we are seeing here. Seeing that we have a great high priest talking about Jesus who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession or our profession, for we do not have a high priest talking about Jesus. And remember, we are also learning as priests. He, the high priest, we, the priest. So let's see some things from the priest, high priest. We start with the feelings of by infirmity. So he as the high priest, for him to be able to speak for man, he was he was man. So another thing about we are seeing there is a shared identity. So he had the identity. Remember, the Bible talks about Jesus that in, in, in Philippians chapter 2, Philippians 2 from verse 5, the Bible says that Jesus was did not consider himself equal with God, even though he was God, but he became as man. So there was a shared identity. That was why he could speak the language of man to God, and he could speak the language of God to man. So sympathize with our weakness. We know that more as actually considering the fact that Jesus Christ went through everything we went through. He, 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 it's not, he only doesn't just sympathize, he also empathizes with our weaknesses, but was in all way, he was in all way tested, but yet without sin. And then Bible says that we can then boldly come to the throne of grace. Still reading Hebrews chapter 4, 14 to 16. We can boldly come to his throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need to help and find grace to help in time of need so we've seen that so that's that, that, that that's just, that's the role of a priest in, in a nutshell. So in Hebrew, I'm sure some of us have a friend, you know, with um, Jewish background with the name Kohen. In some cases, they've changed, in mo most cases, the care has been changed to, to see. So they are seen as truth sayer. They say the word of God and seer. They see what God is saying and then they say to man and they offer sacrifices. So that's the, the role of the, but let's unpack this role in, I mean, into, uh, into let's unpack the, this role. The first part, which is the main part that I want us to see, as uh, is rendering of sacrifices. Rendering of sacrifices. That was what I said earlier on. Take note of living stones because we'll be seeing living sacrifices now. Living stones, living sacrifices. Let's read um, from, remember we're talking about practice. The, we are saying the practice has changed, but the principle remains the same. The practice has changed, but the principle remains the same. So that's what we are seeing. Leviticus 6, 12 and 13. I want us to take note of certain things of the, of the principles. So the principles are remaining the same the practice have changed, but the principle the, the, the principle remains the same. And the fire of the altar shall be kept burning on it. It shall not be put out. Take note of it. That, that's continually. It shall put, put wood on it every morning, lay the burnt offering in order on it. Take note of that. So there is an order. We can't just do it haphazardly. We can't just do things as we like. And he shall burn on it the fat of the peace offerings. A fire shall always be burning on the altar. It shall never go out. It shall never go out. So to take note of that always, always. Hebrews 10, 10 to 11. Hebrews 10, 10 to 11. Always. 
we are seeing the principle, we are, um, we are saying the practice has changed, but the principle remains. So part of the principle we are emphasizing here is always by what we also have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly daily, repeat, repeatedly, we are seeing always again, the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. So the principle, so we are not offering sacrifices again because Jesus Christ offered once and for all. So we are not offering bloody sacrifices, you know, I'm the, the, he's saying bloody, I'm not swearing, I'm talking about the fact that blood coming out of it. So we are not offering such sacrifices any longer. What sacrifices are we offering now? And remember what's the principle? always consistently always consistently so what are we should we be offering always and consistently now praise and good works hebrews 13 15 and 16 and praise and good works therefore by him let us continually are we seeing that are we seeing the principle offer the sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of our lips, given thanks to his name, but do not forget to do good, that's the other part, and to share for self sacrifices, God is well pleased. So always, we you know sometimes we give to people that are going to say thank you to us, people that are going to appreciate to us, I mean appreciate us. And sometimes when people don't appreciate us for what we do, you know, it's natural, it's human. We 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 we, we, we are set aback. But we are seen here always, always remember what the Bible says in Galatians 6, 9. You know, I'm just going to quickly quote that Galatians 6, 9 and 10. The Bible talks about, you know, do not be grow weary in well-doing, for he is faithful that has promised you, he is faithful that has, has promised you, and is going to reward if you think not. So praise and good words. So keep at it. Keep at it in terms of your praise. So sometimes things might not be easy. Keep praising him. So sometimes people might not appreciate your good works. Keep doing it because God will definitely reward you. Another sacrifice you wish to offer continually, faith. Philippians 2, 17. Philippians 2, 17. Faith. Yes, and if I've been poured out as a drink offering, sacrifice, on the sacrifice and service of your faith, I am glad and I rejoice with all. So sacrifice of faith. And remember what the Bible says in the book of Romans, anything that is not of faith is sin. So that is why our life should always be of faith. It should be of faith. So we should live by faith. We live, Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we live by faith and not by sight. A continual living, a continual, it should be a lifestyle. And then another sacrifice we need to keep offering ourselves. Ourselves, I believe that's the ultimate sacrifice. Ourselves, Romans 6, 13 and Romans 12, 1. Ourselves, thank you so much, multimedia. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. Can you see yourself? So and for me, this also ties well with the fruit of the spirit that we looked at not too long ago, um, self-control, but present yourselves, not someone else, you to God as being alive. Remember I said earlier on, we saw living, living stones. We are seeing again living sacrifices from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. You know, as I alluded to earlier on, you know, it's Passion Week. So we are also talking about the fact that, you know, we been uh, in the same way just Christ died for us, we should be dead, we should mortify our flesh. 12 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, it was saying, I'm begging you. That was Paul, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. So we are we are so, so a living sacrifice. If, if, if it sounds like a paradox or irony, living sacrifice. Sacrifice talks about something dead, living talks, you know, and you're still alive. So it's talking about living spiritually, and it's talking about death spiritually. So we should be dead to think things of the devil, things of the flesh, we should be alive unto God, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So which is your reasonable service? So our ultimate sacrifice is we giving our body, giving our all to God. Prayers. Another thing I want us to take note of is prayers. Luke 1.10. 
Luke 1 10. You know, there you see regarding that was talking about, about Zechariah. It says, and the whole multitude of the people was praying outside at the of incense. If you read in verse 9 of that um of that passage, verse 9 of that passage, I mean verse 9 of that passage says, according to the custom of the priest office, his lot was to burn incense. So I just want you to see that there, that one of the responsibilities of the priest burn incense. But you and I no longer need to burn incense. You know, I know some Orthodox assemblies still do that. We no longer need to burn incense. What kind of incense do we need? Revelation 8, 4, our prayers our prayers. So, and the smoke of the incense, one thing about incense, depending on what is used, it's got nice smell. Incense usually have nice smell with prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angels. And, you know, there are many other scriptures, but because of time, it, it, one of the scriptures in Revelation talks about the fact that all our prayers, you know, are like in verses before God. They have been kept before God. In Psalm 141 verse 2, too. Um, um, David was saying that my prayers have gone before you day and night as incense. So our prayer, so we no longer need to burn incense. I remember, as I mentioned earlier on, incense have nice fragrance. I'm sure some of us might even still use it just for, just to to have a nice smell in, in, our, in our houses. So it has a nice smell. That's why the Bible says in, in Luke 18, 1, men ought to pray and not to faint. Are you seeing the principle again? Always. You remember what the Bible also said in, in Thessalonians? Pray without ceasing. Always. So the principle of always, we are seeing it in rendering of sacrifices. Principle of always, of consistency, of continually. So whatever you do, make sure your altar doesn't go cold. Make sure that the fire on your altar never goes, ne 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 never, never goes down. And how are you going to do this? Only by ensuring, you know, if you go back and read in Leviticus later on, only by ensuring that there's, there's always a fuel, there is wood. And what is the fuel? for you so there is wood or there is oil and what is the fault for you and uh, uh, for you and me the holy spirit so ensure you keep having the holy spirit so that you 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 are continually filled rather by the spirit that's what bible says in ephesians 5 18 do not be filled with wine but be being filled by the spirit so when you have that you'll be the fool will be there let's quickly look at another responsibility or another practice reconciliation what was the meaning of it one of the things you see is you see that all these responsibilities tie together. So reconciliation and in between that, you're bringing two parties that are conflict at our at loggerheads. You're bringing them together. Let's read Hebrews 10, 11. Jesus Christ exemplified it and he expects us. And every priest stands ministering daily. Are you seeing that principle again? Daily, offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. Romans 5.1. How just Christ exemplified it. The Bible says, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus. So that's, that's reconciliation. It brought us, you know, to be at peace. We are formerly at loggerheads with, with God, but now it brought us at peace. 15, 16. So seeing Jesus practicing it, he exemplified it. But now he's asking you and me that I might be a minister of Jesus Christ. So we've seen Jesus We've seen the, 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 the Levitical priests. We've seen Hebrews 10, 11 talking about the Levitical priests. Romans 5, 1 talking about Jesus, our high priest. Now 15, 16, Romans 15, 16 talking about you and me. Be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. So through witnessing. So as we minister through witnessing, we are reconciling. Remember what one of the things we said uh, in terms of summarizing priesthood was speak for God and will speak for man, will speak for God. So through witnessing, 2 Corinthians 5, 19 to 21, I want us to see again this principle of Jesus and then to pass down to us. You know, we, we saw the pattern last week. We are emphasizing on the principle this week. 
uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 19, 21, that is that God who was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses. So sin reconciling, and he has committed to us the word or the ministry of reconciliation. So we are supposed to bring men to God. We, as we, through witness, we are supposed to bring men to God and God are pleading through us. You know, that's what, that's what the, um, uh, uh, someone that reconciles do. Implore you in Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. We alluded to this earlier on. Usually someone that comes, you know, even um, the United Nations, human rights, thing, this is one of the things they do. You know, when they, they, when they are um, conducting reconciliation, there will be an in-betweener and that in-betweener must be able to identify with the conflicting parties. So Jesus Christ identified with us. So there was a shared identity. So you and I too should be able to share the identity. We already, we actually already share the identity of man. So based on the fact that we are human, we should be able to witness to others. And because we also have the seed, you know, I remember we, we talked about it a, a couple of weeks ago that we carry two seeds on, uh, on the inside of us. Everyone that is saved, the identity of the first Adam, you know, Adam, our flesh, which always is conflicting with, 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 with the spirit of God on the inside of us. And we also carry the seed of, of Christ on the inside of us. So we carry those two seats. So based on the fact that we do that, we have a shared identity. We should be able to witness to others. Acts 1.8, Acts 1.8, and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and shall be witnesses. Which other way do we reconcile others to God? Through intercession. We intercede, we we'll pray, 1 Timothy 2 1. In often times, we all just want to pray for ourselves. Give me, give me, God. My name is Jimmy. But God is saying you need to pray for others. You know, a couple of um, two main scriptures that always stand to me. One, uh, one is in the Old Testament, the other one is in the New Testament. Old Testament talks about God is looking for a man who will stand in the gap for others. That is intercession. God is all uh, inter intercessor, rather. God is always looking for intercessors. The other that one that stands to me is in the New Testament where the Bible says that he's looking or seeking for men who will be worshiping in spirit and in truth. So God is seeking for intercessor. Therefore, I exhort you, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving of things be made for all men. So don't just continue to pray for yourself. To be able, God has made us priests to pray for others. So pray for yourself, pray for your extended family, pray for your nation, pray for different countries around you, even pray for your enemies, for there is one God, one mediator, that is reconciliation between God and men, the mind Christ Jesus. We can see again, shared identity being emphasized here, the man. Christ Jesus. So it's saying Jesus, man, at the same time, God shared identity. So let's pray for others. Let's pray for others. So reconciliation, of sin rendering of sacrifices, reconciliation. Let's move on to the third one, third responsibility practice, which is reinforcement of God's counsel. You know, Nehemiah 8, 1 to 8, please read it in your own spare time. You see there how Ezra, you know, the prophet, um, he was the priest rather, he was the scribe. He, he read, the Bible says that he stood, in the, as you can see from that picture, at an elevated place and he began to teach them about God's word. And the Bible says that everybody stood. And you know, when they did God's word, Bible says their, their heart was broken. So oftentimes when we reinforce God's counsel to ourselves, to people around us, it should make, sometimes it might make people glad. I mean, many, most of the time, sometimes it might make people mad. You know, they, other times it can even make them sad. You know, sad in a way of, you know, they are sorry for their sins. That was what happened in Nehemiah chapter 8, 1 to 8. Please read um, later on. So, but we, God is saying for you, for you and I, how do we reinforce God's counsel through instruction and demonstration? Let's read those scriptures and it will become clearer. Malachi 2 7. For the lips of a priest should keep knowledge and people should seek the law from his mouth. So people should be able to come to us to seek counsel. We should be able to give people positive counsel. He is a messenger of the Lord of hosts. But the question is can you give what you don't have? You cannot give what you don't have. 
So let's read the other scriptures, Numbers 27, 21. Numbers 27, 21. He shall stand before Eliezer, the priest, who shall inquire before the Lord. So can you see there, you get counsel from the Lord. For him by the judgment of the Urim, and his word shall go out, and at his word they shall come in, and ye all the children of Israel with him, all the congregation. Instructions instructions so that's what you're seeing there instructions matthew 5 19 and it should be through demonstration as well whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches them so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven but whoever does and teaches them shall be called great in the kingdom of god so our life should be living epistles we should leave it out we should leave it out. We should leave it out. And it's only when his word dwells in us richly. Colossians 3.16, the more of his word in us, there will be an overflow to instruct others. There will be an over, we'll be able to, there'll be an overflow in our demonstration. Another way is through declaration. You make a decree. That is what something priests, priests do. That's something um, kings do as well. Let's read Numbers 6, 23 to 24. It's um, the priestly benediction. Speak to Aaron and his son, saying, This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them, The Lord bless and keep you. Uh, um, okay, even though the, the, the media is projecting two verses, but I want us to read it further down. The Lord bless you and keep you. I hope someone is saying amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel. So remember this declaration. You don't need to wait for your pastor to say it. You can say it to yourself. You can say it to others. So you can only do this by understanding. So, so you need to have faith in your heart. Second Corinthians 4.13, the Bible says, as we believe, so we say. Second Corinthians 4.13, as we believe, so we say. Romans 4, 17, calling those things that be not as though they were. So declaration. Hebrews 10, 23, let's hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering for his faithful that has promised. So keep declaring, keep declaring, keep decreeing. So sometimes you need to play hands on your body, your, of your, of your own body. So declare, you know, you have a business, lay hands on it, declare, declare. The Bible says in Mark 11, you shall say to this mountain, Mark 11, 23 to 25, and when you do not have doubt in your heart, it shall be done unto you. So through declaration. Um, uh, finally, in terms of um, the, uh, finally for, for today, in terms of the responsibility, regulation, what do I mean by that? Regulation, you see for them, they monitor, they assess, they inspect, they maintain equity and equality. This can be summed up as judgment. Let's read those scriptures, Deuteronomy 17, 8 and 9. So they judged. If a matter arises which is too hard for you to judge between decree, degrees of guilt for bloodshed between one judgment, um, you shall go up to the place where the Lord your God chooses, verse 9, and you shall come to the priest, the Levites, and to the judge in those days and inquire of them. Judge. So take note of that. Leviticus 27, 8. Leviticus 27, 8. Leviticus 27, 8. But if he's too poor so to pay your valuation, then he shall present himself before the priest, and the priest shall be set a value for him. So I want you to take note of that valuation, judge, assess. That's what the Bible is saying there. But for you and I, we are no longer assessing others. We are no longer judging others. So what we do now is assess yourself. Second Corinthians 13, 5, examine yourself if you're still standing in faith. That's what the Bible is saying. Examine yourself, judge yourself, evaluate yourself. That's what we do now. You know, Matthew 7, 1 to 5 says, judge so that, judge not so that you not be judged. So we are supposed to now judge ourselves. Another way is in terms of valuation, way with God's standards, way with the eternal view, way with the eternal perspective. Second Corinthians 4, 17 to 18. So whatever you're going through, 
assess the situation for a light affliction which is but for a moment is working for us a far more second corinthians 4 17 and 18 exceeding an eternal weight of glory why we do not look at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporary but the things which are not seen are eternal so you're weighing you're assessing you're evaluating using eternal perspective so that should be our role now for regulation. We judge, we judge ourselves for regulation. We will saying we assess, we weigh with God's standards. In closing, you know, I want us to see, you know, in closing, I want us to see something, especially considering, you know, the considering the the the, the season in which we found ourselves. When you have time, please study those scriptures. I'm studying Numbers two um, um, from verse 1 up until numbers chapter i mean chapter 3 39 you know if you are to map it out this picture you see here you see there that that looks like the picture of the cross that's the arrangement of the that's the arrangement of the people of israel in the camp that was the arrangement in the middle they had the tabernacle and close to the tabernacle you see are the priests the levites and then you have the other tribes around them. Numbers 153 talks about the, how the Levites were surrounded. So proximity for responsibility. So they were closest to the presence of God and they were able to influence others around us. So it's only when we are closer to God that we'll be able to influence others. We'll be able to influence others as priests. Psalm 103 verse 7 Bible says that Moses knew his ways and the people of Israel saw the acts of God. He spent time in the presence of God and was able to relay the ways of God to others. So proximity for responsibility. We want to influence as priests for God, as royal priesthood, we need to be closer to God. I pray that God help us in the mighty name of Jesus.